Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,438. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, either the finished file or the start file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, the next two videos, 38 and 39, we're going to see how to use Excel spreadsheet formulas and DAX formulas to create a cross-tabulated or and, and logical test sales table. Here's the finished result. So for any given cell on this cross-tabulated table, I need to look at the row header and get the channel mail order. But then I need to look to the column header and get one, two, three conditions in an OR logical test. Now, the way this works is the sales being added right there. We say, are any of the sales in this column equal to mail order and Aspen or mail order and Bellin or mail order and Yanaki. Now, in this video, we'll see how to do it with Excel spreadsheet formulas. And in the next video, we'll see how to do it with DAX formulas. Now, let's go over to our start file. Now, I already have a unique list of products over here. And I want to add data validation drop down list to all these cells. So I'm going to highlight the cells, go up to data, over to the data tools, click on data validation and allow not any value, but a list. The source is going to be right here. So from now on, only these items will be allowed in these cells. I click OK, and now I have a drop down. Carlota is a freestyle boomerang. Quad is a freestyle boomerang. And we have Aspen, Bellin, and Yanaki as our beginner group. Now. The function we use for adding with and conditions is the sum ifs function. Now, the sum range, that's going to be the sales column. And watch this. If I highlight this, it's going to give me table formula nomenclatures. And for this example, I don't want to use table formula nomenclature. So watch this. I'm going to highlight one cell below, hit the F4 key to lock it, and then backspace 8. Now, sum range. We can have criteria range, then criteria, criteria range 2, then criteria 2. And this will set up the AND logical test for the sum ifs. Now, the first column, I'm going to do channel, F4, backspace, and type in 8, comma. And the criteria, I'm going to click on the dealer. And when I copy the formula to the side, I need it locked on G. But when I move down, I need G8 to move to G9. So I hit the F4 key one, two, three times to lock the column, but not the row, comma. Criteria range two, that's going to be our product column. I'm going to highlight all the way one below, F4 backspace eight, comma. And here, this is actually an AND logical test. Sum ifs treats criteria 1 and 2 in, in an AND logical test. But no problem. Watch this. I'm going to highlight all of these. And when I copy the formula down, it needs to be locked. But when I move it to the side, I need that whole range to move. So I'm going to hit the F4 key once and twice to lock the 5 and 7 row references, but not the H. Now, what that will do is it will match all of these up with that one. So as we said before, it'll be dealer and Carlota or dealer and quad. This one will be ignored. So I'm going to come to the end and close parentheses. Now, if I hit Enter, this is not going to work. And the reason why, F2, is because right there, when I gave criteria 1, 2 more than one item, that instructs the sum ifs function to spit out more than one answer. It is expecting a single item in that function argument. We gave it multiple items. So this is called a function argument array operation, because some ifs will spit out an array of answers. If I hit F9, well, that was a bad example. Those are the correct answers. It's because there are no Carlota or quad sales for the dealer. But notice, it did spit out three answers. We gave it three items as OR criteria, sum if spits out three answers. Now, Control Z. In order to add that, we use the SUM function. But if I use SUM, I would have to use the special keystroke, Control Shift Enter, because this is an array formula. So I'm going to type a P, the SUM product. If I hit Tab, 
we'll have no problem with operating on the array and then adding it. Now, normally you do array 1, array 2, array 3, and sum multiplies the arrays and then adds. By just putting one array in, it will use only the sum part. Now, the reason we're using sum product is because it will handle this array operation without any special keystroke. So I come to the end, close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down, drag it off to the side. Now if I come over here and hit F2 and come inside, click on Array, if I hit F9 key here, it got one, two, three answers. All right, so that's how we can do this. And I better come down to the last cell and hit F2 and just make sure that all of the cell references are working, and they are. So that's how we can do it with Excel spreadsheet formulas. When we come back in our next video, we'll get to see how to do this with DAX formulas. All right, we'll see you next video.